presented our five individual treatment cases where, that were treated at our center with um, the KIF 101 product, which is um, a CD19 directed car, second generation with a, a CD28 a co-stimulatory domain. Um, we did um, one patient with a secondary progressive MS, one patient with primary progressive MS, and three patients with relapsed remitting MS. And um, we, we showed, which was uh, the main message from our preliminary data of this really heterogeneous and mixed group and heavily refractory group of patients, um, that even though all of these patients were refractory to CD20 monoclonal antibodies, uh, we um, saw um, uh, that they, all of them, even though that was a real issue, um, the, the fear of an heavily neurotoxicity, we showed that they, all of them only experienced mild grade CRS and no um, uh, icons at all. Um, we, we treated the CRS with tocilizumab, anakinra, and dexamethasone, and um, we showed um, an expansion dependent effect on the oligoclonal bands. As we saw, like th uh, four of the five patients expanded um, had a good. A Cardisa expansion within the peripheral blood, and a one patient did expand really poorly, and um, the oligoplonal bands um, rapidly decreased uh, in four of uh, the five patients, and the one patient that did not expand um, uh, adequately, that didn't show any movement of the oligoclonal bands. So this kind of indicates that the Cardisa have an expansion-dependent effect. I although have to mention that after their nadir, the oligoclonal bands seem to um, increase afterward. We are still looking into that with um, more translational research and um we also saw, from a clinical point of view, the EDSS, the expanded disability um, uh, score. We saw that there was um, an, a slight, in one patient, a slight increase, uh, which was during the inpatient stay uh, due to an, an UTA phenomenon, and also uh, due to the immobilization during inpatient stay, which is going to be an issue, I think, uh, during exploring CAR T cell um, therapy in MS patients because immobilization and UTA phenomenon is going to be an issue. And then also we saw after um, uh, a decrease after discharge, then we saw a um, secondary increase above the baseline. We're still looking into it. It's important to say that all of these da data is generated from really um, the heterogeneous group, and especially this patient that had an EDSS progression, had um, a heavily uh, had a 23 years of history of MS. So, so it's uh, to just put this into perspective, and then we saw. Um, uh, also, in three patients, um, um, non-enhancing MRI lesions, really small spinal MRI lesions at different time points without a clinical uh, correlate. It's important to mention that the etiology of these kind of lesions um, is, is unknown, and um, we, we are still uh, trying, uh, we, are, we are still um, unsure or unclear uh, what these lesions are interpreted in. There are different interpretations, also um, because we didn't do an MRI. I, this was not a clinical study, this was an individual treatment attempt, and we didn't do an MRI um, right before the infusion, so it could also mean that these lesions are old lesions um, that kind of um, were detected after cartesial infusions and uh, necessarily are not um, in, in relation to the infusion. It could also be that these, infra, these um, lesions are actually part of the um, CAR T cell uh, infiltration because we saw, which was also remarkable, despite not seeing any um, neurotoxicity in form of icons, we did see an um, uh, infiltration of the uh, CAR T cells within the CSF, uh, which hasn't been described yet. I mean, it could be a general phenomenon because uh, obviously like lumbar puncture is only performed in patients with heavily um, icons. So therefore, there's further study uh, needs to be done and it needs to be um, investigated further. But the general message that we um, want to um, want to or that our data uh, is uh, giving us is that um, CAR T cell CD19 directed CAR T cell therapy in MS patients is safe and can be performed. And there's further data that needs to be studied.